back in the 1980s, 1990s, even into the 2000s, probably even now, uh, and I do know of churches now, there was a movement going on called the shepherding movement. And that simply explained was it meant that you had to have an authority figure. You know, there was the head pastor, there was this pastor, there were these people. And it was like this big hierarchy of command. And you had to be under authority. Um, And it was, uh, it didn't produce very good fruit at all. In fact, uh, that... um, stereotype, if you will, is not godly. It is Egyptian. The Egyptians always did the pyramid, which is Pharaoh at the top, and then you had varying levels getting bigger and bigger all the way down. And the last level was the slave level, you know, which is where most of the people were, which were the Egyptians. So that model actually creates slavery, if you will. And that was never God's intention. God's intention was when he brought the children of Israel to Sinai, he wanted every single last one of them, every man, woman, and child, to have a relationship with him. And they are the ones that got afraid and said, Moses, you go talk to him, tell him, tell it, come back, tell us what he said, and we'll do what you say. That, you know, the Jews say that broke God's heart. It didn't break his heart, but it really made him sad because he wanted to have a relationship with everyone. And and certainly when Jesus came and then sent the Holy Spirit, that's still his desire uh, is to have uh, around the cross, around Jesus, with the Holy Spirit, we are all equal. There is not one person that is supposed to be in authority over another person. Now, what that movement did is it taught us to give away our authority. And, uh, and the enemy just loved that because it teaches us that, oh, wait, do I have authority? It teaches you to give your authority away to the enemy. In essence, I've watched it really deteriorate the authority in the church as well and the body of Christ because... Then they go. They'll listen to people in authority. I don't care if it's a doctor or uh, uh, anyone in authority. They're prone to listen because they've been they were taught so hard that you have to be under authority. Well, not it's not God's way. Um, uh, many years ago, it's over ten years ago. I did a message. It's not on YouTube. This is before YouTube, but it was about uh, the scripture that God has given us uh, all power over all the power of the enemy. And that word, the first word power, is he's given us authority over all the power of the enemy. And that means authority too, but it also meant drama. And um, Michelle, uh, a lady in my ladies' mentoring group, had a dream uh, a few nights ago uh, in in the dream, someone was crying off a child that uh, in the school that she works at, and she's going, "You have no authorization." And I thought that was just great, great word, because we have to learn that the enemy, and I don't care, no other person has no authorization in our life, even as wives. You know, it's like we have to look at who are we giving our authority away to? Who are we giving authority in our life? Because that movement took Jesus' authority in our life. And rather than him working in us, through us, for his good pleasure, we've been giving our authority away. And it, 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 in who we let be an authority over us rules us and makes slaves of us. And only Jesus is the ultimate authority. He should be the only authority in our lives. So when you're giving place to somebody in your life, you're giving, um, letting their words have authority in your life, you better make sure those words line up with what the Lord says about them. Otherwise, you are giving your authority totally away. Um, and that's not something that God wants you to do. Um, it's, uh, it's, I'm looking at the words I wrote down to make sure I got it. So this morning in prayer, this is where I'm trying to get to, 
is that there are a lot of words that have been spoken about the body of Christ, uh, especially in the media and especially in Hollywood, uh, especially by different groups that don't like (laughs) Christians. And what I found myself, uh, well, what the Lord told me to pray was to break the authority and the power over all the words that have been spoken over the body of Christ that are not God's words. I can't tell you how many people that have come to me and have had prophecies over them that haven't come to pass, and they've been trying to fulfill them or whatever, and I'm going, well, number one, was was it God? <laughs> you know, was it God to begin with? And number two, why are you letting these people have authority in your life? Or somebody that was a quote-unquote leader or authority figure, and you somebody brought their great desires or something God had told them, and it was totally just, uh, you know, put down. You know, you've got to learn... You know, who are you giving your authority away to? Because if it's anybody other than Jesus, you are basically giving your authority away to the enemy. (laughs) And unless their word, unless their word lines up with God's word. And so that means you've got to have God's word first. He's got to be first authority. That's something I'm internally grateful for, for Kenneth Copeland. He always said, God's Word needs to have first authority in your life. God's Word is first authority in your life. And anything or anyone else that doesn't line up with that is wrong. So look at who you are giving your authority away to because you have a voice, you have power to execute, you have that authority, you have the authorization to... um, to be authorized under Jesus, or not even under him, with him, to enforce his will and his authority in your life. And ultimately, the devil, other people have no authority in your life unless you give it to them. So don't give your authority away.